YouTube, it's Tom, back with another one for you. This one, uh, dealing with presentments. This is the 11th video, uh, part three of the um, How to Shut Them Down series. This is toward the, toward the end, <clears throat> right? So we're talking about hypothetical situations, but also speaking about fundamental principles of the whole commercial system in general and the ways that these people are slacking on the shit that they're supposed to be doing right procedural errors everywhere fucking fraud this shit is crazy so we'll get into this shit so, so let's get into this part four we got uh five we got court bond <clears throat> so just recently long after the writing of this article commenced we were provided with the text of an explanation about a single page document on standard court pleading format <clears throat> so that it looks like a normal court brief that has allegedly had dramatic access when used. The bond, i.e. the court bond, revised by several people from the original version, plus the explanation we received concerning the instrument, essentially intact as we received it, accompanying this article. <clears throat> the court bond is not a pleading or motion needing determination from the court. It is not an argument, opinion, or point of law, nor is it a negotiation. It is just a bond. Who could object? So. And who would object, right? So the court bond is a special bond as described in Rule E of the Supplementary Supplemental Admiralty Rules in the Federal uh, Rules of Civil Procedure in 28 U.S.C. Admiralty is the only place mentioned in the rules where bonds apply. So that's another indication that what they're doing is operating under the Maritime um, Admiralty Jurisdiction, which is all contract and uh, commercial in nature. <clears throat> so what this says is that... Uh, Admiralty is the only place mentioned in the rules where bonds apply. So they don't, so bonds don't even apply in anything other than commercial venues. So a bond seems to be appropriate only on admiralty proceeding. And they're always asking for bond, right? They're asking for uh, bail, bail bond, things like that, right? All the time. Which obviously shows that it, that it is uh, admiralty in nature, commercial in nature. So this involves bail bonds, general bonds, special bonds, etc. Anything that... Uh, that <clears throat> Anything that has bonding involved is admiralty in some degree of uh, admiralty. Since all commerce is international and international commerce exists in admiralty, maritime jurisdiction, and every legal matter is commercial. In any court case in which you are involved, always put in a bond. So you want to go to the uh, you want to go to the clerk and verify if the case is in fact bonded or not. And if it is, then you need a, uh, a certified copy of it. And if it's not bonded, then you go ahead and bond it. Right, so uh, I think I go into that in the uh, creditors and their bond series of, of the videos uh, as far as what to do regarding the uh, bonds and things like that. <clears throat> and also, also I do have a form of that too. So if you need to email me, I'll send you the form of the template of the, of the bond that you would file. Uh, so since the bond you file becomes a permanent part of the uh, record, if anyone tries to remove the file bond, you have a file stand copy that substantiates the filing. Since the public side is a reflection in a mirror of content in the private side, if there is no private side ledger, then there can be no public side ledger. And so that also means that, so what they mean by public and private, so there had to be a private physical living being that had to come and fill out paperwork in the public venue and ask them for their assistance to get remedy from you for some situation. So, but, so they're bringing a private matter into the, into the public and asking them to help there. So what they mean by, you know, so the pub, the, the private ledger would be like the affidavit, a sworn affidavit by a live living person. And what you're going to find a lot of times is that when the state's charging you and things like that, it's really a public entity trying to uh, force their code in the private section where it doesn't apply because they're coming at you in the capacity of a uh, individual operating in the public. So you literally have to be engaged in commerce for any of their rules, codes, or statutes, and things like that to even freaking apply. And so if you overlook that, you know, even those errors, if you agree and contract with them, then you essentially, um, you essentially wipe away all of the defects and they can go ahead and move and move forward. You see how that works? So without any reality, as mirror has nothing to reflect. <clears throat> the books, ledgers must balance, public and private. File the, uh, filing the bond removes removes you from the controversy. You cannot be required to pay any claim for losses or costs because you have covered any and all of them by providing a bond backed by your exemption, which is unlimited, unlimited credit, okay? Think about that. 
So you have covered every outcome by your good faith effort. A court exists to resolve disputes which require adverse parties. The bond removes you from the arena by ending the controversy and discharging any obligation there might, might be via the bond. So whether there is or isn't any uh, assessment in, in fact. So assessment in fact would be like a, uh, like a little detailed list of, uh, of like whatever the charges are commercial in nature so that would have to be a uh, what do you call it like a itemized list something along those lines is what you're going to be looking for and if they don't have any of that you need to bond them uh, strategically it might be wise for you to file your bond at the last minute just before going to court to foreclose them from sufficient time to study it and brainstorm on how they can get around it Use of a notary and autograph stamp renders dishonoring the bond considerably more difficult. <clears throat> so does sending a copy to the court administrator, mayor of the municipality, the municipality risk management department, and perhaps even the Army Corps of Engineers. So, which is pretty much just the one who fucking runs this whole damn show here, the Wizard of Oz. So the judge is holding the original books, which is okay with us. Let him own the account and make the adjustments. Then he, then he is responsible. So since the judge is not going to go to jail, if anyone has to take the fall for the charges, it must be the attorneys. All admiralty courts require posting a bond to initiate a cause of action. A case because somebody needs to be liable. And that's a good way to find out who actually had the balls to put their shit on the line. Because whoever, whoever bonded the case essentially is admitting to being the one that's going to uh, be the surety in case anything goes, goes wrong in the case. Which is why you're probably going to find a lot of them don't want to do that. Especially if you start asking about it. They, they usually don't want you to bond it, and you're going to do that by paying the bond to get out of jail, the bail bond, boom. So now you bonded that shit with your, and, and so now you're the surety. And see how that works? So instead of using your fucking exemption on, on the private side, which essentially would allow you to discharge the whole, the whole case automatically. And see how that works? So a case commences and is bonded when the prosecuting attorney files the complaint. The complaint is the bond and is signed by the prosecuting attorneys. It is a firm offer uh, and original issue offered to the clerk. Who buys the contract that is the original money which is brought under the bar numbers of the filing attorneys or the uh, prosecutors the clerks buy it because the attorneys guarantee that they will produce someone to pay the fines and go to jail the clerk takes the complaint to the court which is the bank and issues a voucher the voucher is a security the commercial bank credits the court accounts in the commercial bank and then monetizes the voucher by sending it to freddie mac or Fannie mae making the instrument an insured government security so you see what it is right I mean, it's really not even that complicated. And when you look into, you know, the fact that everything is commercial and things like that, you're going to, it's going to become real, real clear as to what it is that's going on here as far as how the, uh, as how the transactions are taking place and then how it'll be easy for you to find your remedy, right? <clears throat> so we believe that this process creates the public funds by the charges made against the straw man for which the real, the real being ends up paying as the surety if the presumption that the real you may be treated as and is therefore liable for the obligation of the straw man defendant. It is not eliminated from the equation. We further think that these public funds are credited possibly by going through the commercial banks, TTL, treasury tax and loan account to the customer's IE, the court's account, and other, which, which is what they would do essentially, right? Because they're gonna securitize the instrument and then um, cash in on the private side, which would be a uh, Fedwire uh, private, private banking. And that would probably go right to their, to their trust, I would imagine too, right? Right out of the jurisdiction of them being able to get fucked with, right? So you see the game, right? You see how that shit works? In other words, when your straw man is charged as a defendant in an action, it appears that what happens is, the, is that the public funds are created by using your exemption to create the public money that covers the check for the commercial bank rights to deposit in the, in the court's account. So let's say, i.e., your straw man is indicted. <clears throat> you go to court and you get an attorney, you go through a trial and the jury finds the straw man guilty. At the sentence hearing, the judge says openly, uh, as if addressing no one in particular, will the defendant please rise? The, de term, the term defendant and the term the defendant are um, different until sentencing. Uh, all attorneys, officials, judges, etc. have been engaged in prosecuting your all cap straw man defendant, not you, at the sentencing. At, at sentencing, in order to procure enforcement of the judgment you must provide the legal determination that the real you and the fictitious you are contractually united or married then you go along for the ride concerning anything the system wants to do to you or your straw man such as finding or imprisoning you or both and you see so your consent is needed 
the whole way. And you're going to see that in different intervals, they're going to give you opportunities to fucking uh, clear it up. And so when you learn the whole game and you watch people deal with, with anybody in the court system, you literally watch them sentence themselves to jail because they're going to agree in some way, shape, or form. And you're going to see how that shit goes. So the term designated as the defendant is not identified in a case until either someone pleads guilty or pays a fine and goes to prison. <clears throat> in court paperwork, the one accused or indicted is designated as the defendant. The real you is simply a being, a body, waiting to be placed into the slot of the of the defendant, who must pay with dollars and incarceration time for the alleged crime, after the straw man defendant has been found guilty. Anyone who makes an appearance in the case, even the attorney, could also fall into the category of the defendant or the plaintiff, including any defendant or plaintiff named or identified. This dance is a dynamic scam that can change at any time during the proceedings, including long after you have been convicted, sentenced, or incarcerated. The maximum of law pertains to this include the maximum of laws that pertain to this include once a fraud, always a fraud. So yeah, right, obviously. And so that's why you get the fruit of the poisonous tree and things like that, you know, different things like that that are put in place to help you if you were ever to be able to, to catch the bullshit from the beginning, right? Like in the probable cause hearings and things like that, which they usually try to get you to waive, right? So then, uh, things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by subsequent act. Meaning that if you initially pulled somebody over, you had no fucking reason to stop them. It don't matter what the fuck you found on them, right? Because the whole stop was illegal from, from, the, from, from the beginning. So a thing void in the beginning does not become valid by lapse of time. So it don't matter what the fuck point after you engage in a criminal act that, that any of that can somehow become legal. It doesn't work like that. So time cannot render invalid an act void in its origin. So it doesn't matter how long it's passed. It was either it was either done properly or it, or it wasn't. So because both the private and public set of books are involved, uh, what gets sent to prison is an amalgamation. A all caps John Doe Smith, the body John Doe Smith. The interesting thing is that the <clears throat> the time you go into prison and your body is admitted, your all caps name is placed on the ID tag. When you receive a discharge from the department, it's true too. When you receive a discharge from the Department of Corrections, the paperwork issued has your name in. Oh, I, I I never noticed that shit though. I'll tell you that. So right here it says, when you receive a discharge from the Department of Corrections, the paperwork issued has your name in proper English, upper and lower case letters. Why is that? Speculation is that at is that any time up to and including discharge, you could be freed for some other reason than serving your time, such as an appeal, habeas corpus, the real criminal having been discovered, etc. In other words, the contract formed by the union or marriage of the straw man, the private name and body is not fulfilled until the terms and conditions of the bond filed by the attorney in the form of a complaint are fulfilled. Uh, the case was bonded on the come uh, by the attorney's guarantee by, by staking his barcode uh, bond number that a defendant would pay the penalty and fines and or incarceration to cover the bonds, thereby getting the attorney off the hook. So to use the automobile situation as an example, when you purchase a new car, one of the documents in the nine pack uh, is one of the dealership glosses over and does not elaborate on. Most people are so busy signing their name on all the paperwork that they don't question everything anyway. Uh, what this document does is give title of the automobile to the State Department of Motor Vehicles to whom the manufacturer's certificate of origin, the MCO, is sent. The MCO is title, i.e. equitable substance title. So you as the user have legal title, meaning they get the elevator substance and you get the shaft, the legal liability. You receive a pink slip instead of the actual the actual title so you see what it is and then, and so you know that and i mean you know that because when you get your title after you pay your car off and all that uh it's gonna come in the name of the state <laughs> like your name's gonna be on it but the, it's gonna be because it's, it's gonna come in the state oh that's because it's in the state trust meaning that it's fucking their shit and you're just using it which also means that they would be liable for all of the payments and things like that too and they would be liable to pay you as an employee since you've been t uh, maintaining and, and driving their uh, property for X amount of time, right? So think about that. So at the end of your payments, which is a certificate of title, a certificate is not title. Uh, it is simply a document stating that a title exists somewhere. So if the, uh, if the cops give you a ticket and impound your car, it is incarcerated until you have paid the ransom to get it out. In the case of a conviction prison situation, your body or car is impounded, sitting in jail until control of the jailer, user, or your straw man on the basis of a charge by a prosecutor having made a complaint. It matters not what the complaint is, 
uh, as it is all smokescreen and misdirection to divert attention away from what is really going on. They have put your name on an account and are using your body during the time of their impounding your body in accordance with the terms in the bond and the uh, complaint filed. Suddenly you ask them for the... Suddenly you ask them for the bond that was posted and allows them to do this and they don't want to fucking reply. Well, I mean, if it's a commercial transaction in general, which it is because they're operating in the public and they're public fucking servants, they're going to have to be bonded for one, just them in general and licensed to operate in that in that specific field, which doesn't exist. There's no such thing as a fucking license to practice law, but they pretend one exists. But if you're operating in the public and you're putting other people in potential harm, I would imagine that you do have to have a license in some way, shape or form. They do not have a fucking license to even operate, but they are bonded and things like that, right? Because, I mean, it's a private business ultimately anyway. So, you know, it's in like a whole other category. They call it the legal system. That's just a fucking, that's just a broad term for a business because they run a, a legal business. So, anyway, but it's, you know, but don't get that mixed up with it. With, so, don't get the word legal mixed up with the word law. Those are two different things and they're different words because they're different things. So, it appears that the private books dealing with, what do we got here? Okay, so as a result of filing the corp on your proper English name uh, must be removed from their title. They can no longer use your private name because you have posted the corp on or record and paid for everything with your private exemption. Now, keep in mind, so when they take your social and they take you and all that too, so they put your name on an account, you know, they're running your social, they're creating bonds, doing all that shit with it every time you sign a piece of paper. So you can go ahead and fill out a W-4 too, right? And uh, 1040, things like that. Go ahead go ahead and look into that. It's called a W4 sandwich, right? And you run that through everybody, everybody you ever gave your social to. So that so that goes for jails, uh, police stations, uh, jobs you had, different bank accounts, all that shit. And get all that money back so they can get the bill for that shit. Let them pay for that shit. You know, the thing is that, you know, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. I'll say that because everybody understands that. You know what I mean? So, But if we got to pay our taxes, then so the fuck don't you. So the fuck don't you. So by discharging the matter on the private side, by using your exemption, you not only end the dispute and become the owner of the transaction, but owner of any court in which the matter may, uh, may remain for resolution of the non-existing claim. And they can never produce the actual claim. When you start asking, you know, if there's a real living party around here that has an actual claim, they're going to be pretty hard pressed to fucking produce one because all these people are actors and they're, in the, and they're all in the public, which is a whole different realm. And they just, and you know, and they, and they, and they fucking push it on people who don't understand that. And even if you do understand that, it doesn't mean that you won't get fucked with either. Like these people, you know, <laughs> you're dealing with some sore losers, bro. He's like, <laughs> the ego just can't take the bullshit. You know what I mean? When I mean, in all reality, they all got fucking lied to. They all got played by whoever fucking hired them to begin with. You know what I mean? Because I, because it's beyond me how you convince a public servant that he has power that he fucking doesn't. Like you literally, come on, really? So consequences and ramifications of the foregoing include the following. By the private man posting a bond through his private exemption into the public record with the clerk, a separation has occurred between the version criminally charged, the all caps, and the version they want to put on the books in the back office, which is the upper and lower case private name. If the private person is not available, then they can't take the body because the account is no longer whole. You can't put half a body in the in the jail. They need your all caps name in the public record and your lower case name in their private books held by the judge in order to make the accounting whole and take your body. The bond made with your lower case, and I mean, you know that too, because they can never move forward if you don't sign shit. See what happens if you don't sign any fucking thing. They can't do anything. They really, they really need you to sign some shit. So the bond made with your lowercase names, and I mean they can trick you even when you go into jail and, and you and you're signing the paperwork with how much with how much fucking money they pulled out of your pocket and they're putting into your account, your property sheet. You sign that and they got you. You know what I'm saying? So it's not it's not just about signing some some shit in court. They'll fucking get you however they can. <laughs> Snakes, but they're good at what they do, and and so this is why because it's so multifaceted, right? So they need your all caps name in the public record and your lowercase name on their private books held by the judge in order to make the accounting whole. Uh, so the bond made with your lowercase name placed into the bond record with the clerk splits the account into two disjoint halves by, by losing one side of the account. They lose both. They cannot admit John Doe Smith's body to jail if there is no longer a body to discharge at the end of the sentence. 
Since the imbalance remains on the undischarged public side, that must be discharged. The attorney no longer has a defendant or body to fulfill the terms of the bond filed in the form of the original complaint. The result is that within 72 hours, they must either dismiss the case, find another defendant or body to satisfy the pledge in the attorneys on the on the come bond, or the attorneys who filed the complaint must be held liable. And that's why you got to make sure that these people have a bond somewhere because they need to be liable for that shit because they're all committing crazy ass fraudulent acts and they should fucking have to pay for that shit and if it's not bonded the same way as if you don't have insurance when you're driving a car you're getting an accident you got to pay for that shit out of your fucking pocket so find out if that shit is bonded or not so you know who to who to come at and how you know what i mean because it is a game of chess stop playing checkers with these clowns and that's what i got for you for now till we meet again